Huge upgrades just got leaked straight out of Ferrari, and it's borderline insane. And it already has both Red Bull and Mercedes fans terrified for next year's domination of the men in red. After sacking Bonotto, the team has continued with their progress on multiple levels, and with the new regulations in 2023, as well as the improved reliability and massive gain in power of their engine, the Marinello team has been very impressive in the offseason so far. But what is it about Ferrari that's going to be fixed for 2023 and has presented a massive issue for the 2022 season? And spoiler alert, you wouldn't believe what F1 CEO himself said about Ferrari and their incredibly high chances of winning next year. Ferrari had a very strong start to the 2022 season, so much so that they've been labeled as the fastest car on the grid. This is actually the truth, with Ferrari being nothing but dominant in their first three races, although Leclerc lost out in Jetta in the fight with Verstappen. However, Saturday's pace demonstrated that Ferrari possessed the one-lap speed, but when the race arrived, it was either the dependability of the team's choices or their drivers who continued to dig their graves. The latter one has been addressed, although partially by firing Bonotto and have him probably be replaced by a team principal that Leclerc prefers, which would probably be Vasseur. Leclerc is looking to continue the good relationship with the Alfa Romeo principal, one that he debuted under in 2018 and had an amazing rookie season. With that being said, reliability remains the only issue that Ferrari hasn't addressed for the 2023 season, or at least we've been led to believe they haven't. There have been talks about the engine that's supposed to be mounted behind Leclerc and Sainz backs in 2023, and Gunther Steiner spoke about it recently. Haas, the team that he is leading, is also using the aggregates of Ferrari. Therefore, he knows a thing or two when it comes to the development of this particular engine. Steiner was really surprised with the big upgrade that has been made to the reliability of the 2023 engine, labeling it the bomb. But before we get into that, let's see what Bonotto, the now ex-principal of Ferrari, has to say about the 2022 engine, one that proves so fast and yet so unreliable. On the power unit, we set big numbers in terms of objectives, and what we've seen that we have been capable of developing during last season for 2022 on the power unit in more than 25 years in Marinello, I never saw that. It is evident that Ferrari made a huge progress compared to the 2020 and 2021 seasons, finishing P2. However, if you're not watching the sport and are the type of guy to just look at the results and judge by them, then you wouldn't understand why Bonotto was fired and why Ferrari needs to desperately work on the reliability of their engine. After the double DNF in Baku, Leclerc's retirement in Barcelona and Sainz's blown engine in Austria, it became evident that the team needed to properly address this issue for the upcoming season. And Bonotto did talk about this as well, adding that the development for the 2022 season has stopped much earlier than everybody else anticipated, which is why the second half of the season hasn't been as competitive as the first half. The budget cap has also presented a huge challenge for the Marinello team, but nevertheless, it became evident that they were no match for Verstappen and the dominant Honda engine behind his back. What is very uncertain is how the 2023 season will unfold, and with what Steiner had to say about this season, we cannot wait for March to come sooner. Steiner spoke at the Lorenzo Bandini Trophy Award Ceremony in Finenza at the weekend, where Kevin Magnussen collected the accolade. But Steiner's focus was more on the Ferrari engine, with him adding, On Thursday, I met with Mattia Bonotto, and he told me that next season's engine will be the bomb. In Emilia Romagna, there's a lot of support for Ferrari, and if the engine is competitive, it will be positive for us too. It's obvious that Steiner is hoping for this outcome given the fact that his team uses Ferrari's engine, and apart from them, Steiner has a lot of hope in the parts supplier Dallara as well as the input from technical director Simone Oresta for the 2023 season. But even with this, Haas prospects would be beating Alpha Tauri and potentially Aston Martin in the 2023 season. Let's see what's going to happen with Ferrari. Apart from Steiner, Stefano Domenicali, the CEO of Formula One and the former team principal of Ferrari, said that the team must do well and remain competitive after returning to the winning ways after a two-year break. I really hope that Ferrari will find the right solution and stay on track because they did a big recovery from where they were two years ago. We need Ferrari to be competitive and we need to have a good team, a strong team, strong drivers, to fight against the others. So that's the wish that I'm hoping for. Earlier this season, when it became evident that Red Bull and Ferrari were going to be the teams to beat, Bonotto spoke about the engine that Mercedes had in 2022. When talking about this matter, Bonotto said that he would rather work on a fast but unreliable engine than a slow and reliable one. Although Mercedes caught up with Ferrari in the second half of the season, this wasn't a true indicator of the Marinello team's pace, given the fact that they stopped developing it very early in the season. And Bonotto is probably the number one guy that you would want to work on the reliability issues of Ferrari's engine. Obviously, he has proven to not be as good as manager as he is an engineer, but the fact that he has been 28 years with Ferrari and has always here to improve the team's pace is enough for us to believe that he's done the right thing. His resignation could be from a variety of reasons, such as media pressure or the beef he's had with Leclerc, 
but that doesn't take away the fact that Bonotto has poured his heart and soul into the 2023 engine for Ferrari. Whoever comes in as team principal would inherit an engine that has been improved by Bonotto and his team of engineers, and although he won't be there to lead the team into the 24 race calendar, it doesn't mean that the team will fail to perform with the new engine. It's a very interesting case where Leclerc would benefit from having two team principals at the same time. He would benefit from Bonotto because the Swiss have reportedly made the engine a bomb thanks to the help of the experienced engineers. He would have massively benefited from Vasseur given the fact that they were very close friends and have a positive history dating back. But apart from Leclerc, we must not forget about Sainz, who had a bad start to the 2023 season but managed to pick up the pace and, thanks to his decision-making ability, was able to finish higher than Leclerc on multiple occasions. Another thing Ferrari is hoping for is that Red Bull will face a sporting penalty for the 2023 season, which Horner described as draconian. The Marinello team will have 75% wind tunnel and CFD time. On the other hand, Red Bull's penalty saw their wind tunnel time reduced to 63%. Mercedes is a team that is going to utilize the wind tunnel time the most, as they are going to have 80% of the wind tunnel time for the 2023 season. However, we have seen that Ferrari can porpoise and still be extremely fast in 2022, implying that the aerodynamic oscillations are likely to be fixed in the CFD and wind tunnels, leaving them with a car that is both extremely fast and reliable. What is included in this narrative is that the fact that the regulations will be changed, one of which will result in the floor edges and diffuser throat being raised by 15 millimeters. This means that the porpoising is very likely to be gone in 2023, and even if it is, Ferrari will have more time in the wind tunnel to fix it. If you are not familiar with how the raised floor edges and diffuser throats interfere with the porpoising, the number one solution for the 2022 car's porpoising was to raise the ride height. However, with this being done, the car would have gained a massive amount of drag and a loss of a massive amount of downforce. From 2023, every F1 car would be raised by 15 millimeters, meaning that the field has been leveled yet again, and now Ferrari has a legitimate shot at beating Red Bull. Not that the porpoising itself was a huge issue, as we've seen that in Australia, Leclerc and Sainz were bouncing like crazy, but they still managed to qualify decently, as Leclerc went on to win the race from pole position. As we mentioned earlier, the reliability of the issue is going to present a massive problem for Ferrari if it hasn't been addressed, but from what Steiner had to say, we are led to believe that Ferrari is going to be really competitive starting in March. We must not forget the fact that there is trouble in paradise in Red Bull's driver pairing, with Perez not satisfied with how he's been treated by the Austrian team. This is far from the case with Ferrari, and now with how Perez's pace has been dropping rapidly, Red Bull cannot hope that he'll deliver dominant performances weekend after weekend and therefore protect Verstappen's position. On the other hand, Ferrari can hope that Sainz and Leclerc will help each other a lot, no matter who emerges as the championship candidate, and that's something that can be utilized very well when the championship is on the edge. What do you think is next for Ferrari in 2023? Do you think that they have what it takes to end Verstappen's streak and score a championship for the first time after 15 years of pause? And who will be the team's new boss to lead them to success? Let us know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching and a huge shout out to all our loyal subscribers here at F1 Overdrive. Your support is deeply appreciated and if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and that bell icon. The next video will be huge, so don't miss it.